of sugar in the blood can increase your risk of foot infection. Diabetes can affect circulation. Diabetes can damage the nerves in your feet. Here's what you can do. Daily inspection. Get help if you need it. Proper washing and drying. Proper footwear and orthotics, professional care, and indigenous practitioners. Step 1. Daily self-inspection. Daily self-inspection is the um, most important part. Looking at your feet, touching your feet. So you look between the toes and you're looking for cracks, blisters, anything that can create an open area into the skin where bacteria can get in. If you're looking at your feet daily, if you see change, change is probably a key word. If you see change in your foot, you, you want that uh, identified or, or observed. From a Feel your feet for warmth. Um, a lot of diabetics over the years, if they've had diabetes for a number of years, um, can lose um, the ability to feel. And that loss of feeling can go to the point where a bone can break and they don't know it. Um, and one good way to check for a broken bone is f feeling. Heat will tell you that there's inflammation. You can be taught how to take care of your feet yourself. If you can't see uh, your foot um, as well as you should, you can have somebody else in your household do it for you. It's time to check your feet. You That's what you feel see any, like. Do you see any bruises or nope. red marks or? Any infection? I'm going to judge your feet as swollen. Other than that, they look pretty good? Yeah. Okay, we're going to check your feet tomorrow. Okay, Becky, thank you. We'll see you tomorrow afternoon. Okay. If you can't do that, then, and there's nobody else available in your household, then you should see a professional foot care person. Step two, washing your piggies. A uh, lukewarm bath, um, preferably uh, monitored by uh, thermometer or by uh, a non-diabetic. Um, general antibacterial soap, um, lukewarm water, five to ten minutes maximum. Uh, carefully wash in between the toes um, and around the, the sole of the foot and the ankle. Uh, careful to dry between the toes and the foot itself um, to avoid any excessive moisture afterwards. Uh, inspect the feet for general blisters, abrasions, abnormalities uh, during that time frame as well. Soaking your feet uh, for a prolonged period of time is, is more the problem. Um, generally speaking, the longer that you soak your feet, you can get uh, um, loss of hydration in the foot, um, a prune-like appearance, which in itself, ironically, is drying the foot out. Um, dryness can lead to cracks, abrasions, fissures, and uh, an opportunity for um, infection to develop in a diabetic. 
Step three, footwear and orthotics. Shoes that fit your feet. We tell people to stand on a piece of paper, no shoes and socks on, of course, and draw an outline of your foot. And then you put your shoe on top of it. If you can see any part of the outline, then that shoe is too small. That's too small, Mama. What you're looking for is a wide as well as a fairly deep toe box to accommodate any toe deformity, such as hammer toe. You also want the internal structure of the foot, or the shoe rather, to have uh, minimal seams. Again, seams would be a source of possible irritation. You want a strong or firm heel counter, which is the rear part of the shoe. That should be fairly strong because when you have your foot within the shoe, the laces or Velcro straps will actually retain the foot up against that medium here. An open back sandal, for instance, allows the foot to slide around. When the foot slides around, there's an uh, opportune time for friction to develop. Should be lightweight. There should be a removable insole to accommodate orthotics if necessary. Uh, the way we do that is we produce a, a, a um, negative cast of the foot in which we mold plaster Paris casting and capture a nice impression of the foot. And we mold various materials, thermoplastics or graphites, and we create uh, basically a, a customized support to reduce some of the pressures that uh, one might experience. There should be some flexibility in the toe box area. You should have some stability in the lateral rear foot. You should have maximum heel height of about an inch, and that can taper down to the forefoot of a shock absorbing material. Step four, professional care. Managing diabetic foot care is the lead um, program, which is lower extremity amputation prevention program and it's a simple thing it's a, a series of 10 questions we ask people at least once a year we ask them to come in and have this done hi i'm here for my appointment good afternoon max good afternoon we're here to have uh for a diabetic foot assessment Yes. Have you had one of those done before? No. Okay, we'll just go through it slowly. Yeah. I'm going to have a look at your feet. Look between your toes. And we're looking for any redness, splits, blisters, discharge, blood, anything like that that would indicate open area. It's important to look at the underside of your feet too, especially underneath your toes right yeah. here. Yeah. Sometimes they just get sweaty and you have nice warm feet. Yeah. 